but now after writing remember you start out from your um from your domain then you build your data because the data depend on the domain so you start from domain then you build the domain is independent of everyone it doesn't it doesn't even depend on flutter it doesn't depend on framework but like i said the domain will only contain raw dark code and it doesn't depend on anything at all the data however cannot exist without the domain the presentation then depends on the mostly the views will depend on the app logic which is which will be in the qubit or your block and those ones will also depend on the domain so that's how it all works and see how crazy this is because the domain will in turn be calling the data even though it does not depend on the data how is it going to do that let's see how it's going to do that so before we actually go ahead and build out the ui let's go ahead and do the dependency injection because in the ui we will have we would need a qubit so if we create a qubit and we go ahead and say qubit for example in our test in our qubit test we needed the qubit and when we created that qubit up top in here we had to pass in the create user the get users the red and and inside of the create users and get users their use cases we will have to also give them the repository the repository also so let's go ahead and see how that works so for that for dependence injection we are going to be using the package called get it so add that to your dependency flutter pop add get it and flutter pop get and while that's added let's go ahead and continue so in here inside of core we create a new dart file in a folder called services and we can call that an injection container now inside of our injection container we will have to initialize the get it service locator so we're just going to call that sl it will be equal to get it dot instance let's go ahead and import get it so this is how this is going to work so let's go ahead so first of all create a future void we call that in it or whatever you want to call that and we go ahead and make it async and then we start so this is where you initialize every dependency if you had more than one block you will create all of them here but we have only one cube or block or whatever here so we're going to create that in here and then later on whenever we need it we can see sl find me that block and it finds it for you so this is it so let's go ahead and do that so what qubit do we have we have the authentic so we start with sl sorry sl dot register so when you're registering the application logic the base the first thingy you register factory all right However, when you're registering dependency, you register lazy singleton. So remember, register factory is for the top. And what is at the top? It's the qubit, in this case, the authentication qubit. We initialize authentication qubit, right? What is your problem? Yeah, whatever. We initialize authentication qubit and we import it. Import that. We invoke it. Now it asks us for two things uh, create user and it asks us for get users the use cases now these are dependencies you do not initialize them in here you don't go get users and you initialize them here no now this is where we inject how do we inject we invoke the service locator so we say use the service locator and find me where i've initialized that use case so we go ahead and also do the same for this person Find me where I've initialized that dependency. We close it and we can go to the next one and say sl.register lazy singleton. Then we start registering our dependencies. What is the next dependency we want to register? In this case, it will be the create user. So let's go ahead and do that. So for the create user, whenever it looks for the create user, it will check in every singleton, every lazy singleton that you've created and try finding the create user. In this case, this is the create user. The create user wants a repository let's go ahead and use a service locator to find the repository and we close that up let's go ahead and do the register singleton again and do the same thing for get users but see 
we're using this over and over SL SL uh, we can just change this to use a cascade operator that's what we call it in Dart so instead of initializing or using this instance over and over and over again we can just use it once and use double dots to access its value more than once so we want to access SL dots register factory we use dot dots after that we want to access the same sl dot dot register lazy singleton and we also want to access the same sl dot register lazy singleton again this time forget users and it will take sl service locator as its dependency And it, we also need to register this. Remember, now we've created these two dependencies. What about their dependency? They depend on a repository. Now, this is where it gets crazy. So, so far, we've gone from, from the presentation layer into the domain layer because the use cases live in the domain layer. Now, the use cases in the domain layer depend. Remember, the domain layer does not depend on anyone. But somehow, it still depends on the data watch how this happens this is loose coupling at its best so the domain layer actually depends on the authentication repository the authentication repository the contract of it lives inside of the same domain layer right but now watch inside of the data layer we have an implementation for that contract that implements that contract that lives in the domain so in the domain the use cases are actually depending on a an auth repository which lives. So this domain layer actually lives and survives without any other outside factors. It does not need this to function. I can delete the data in the presentation and there will be no reds, no red squiggly lines inside of the domain. But once I delete the domain, there will be red squiggly lines in the data and in the presentation. So now let's see. The domain use cases need an auth repository which lives inside of the domain now when we're injecting dependencies we actually will not give it the auth repository so let's go ahead and register a dependency for it we will not be giving it an authentication repository because this is an abstract class you can see it's an abstract class we can't instantiate this you can see that little sign over there tells us it's abstract we can't abstract classes can't be instantiated right there there you go call that error so what do we do we go ahead and say whenever someone is looking for an authentication whenever anyone's looking for an authentication repository go ahead and give them the authentication repository implementation rather and this one's also looking for a dependency, but we'll give that later. So for now, let's give it the S service locator and tell it hold that. Right, so let's understand this for a bit. So the use case lives in the domain. The use case needs a repository to function. But then when we're injecting, how do we connect that data layer to the domain? How do we connect rather, sorry, how do we rather connect the domain to the data without actually connecting the domain to the data? We'll create a contract and that contract will define the auth repository. But then when we're using the use case, we ask for that contract. However, when we're actually injecting that dependency in our inversion, we rather pass in the, the implementation of that contract which lives in the data layer. So now we're depending on the data layer without actually depending on the data layer. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy, right? I know. Sounds pretty cool. So let's go ahead and continue. Um, after that, we go ahead and register. Remember, this person needs the data source. So now we register the data source and it will be the... So now we also have a contract for the data source. So whenever someone's looking for the authentic remote data source we want to give them the auth remote sorry remote data src implementation i think that's what i called it yes auth remote data src implementation so whenever they look for that we want to give them this rather 
And this one, should you be a constant? This person also wants a client. So for that client, we will also give them an SL. Oh my, that's a lot of dependencies. Now, after we pass that, I'm so sorry for how messy this looks. We can close this up and format that and it should look prettier, but we're not done. We still need to inject the client. Remember, it depends on the client. So let's go ahead and do for the client as well. So we can go ahead and finally register lazy singleton for the client. And what client? So whenever someone looks for a client, we don't need to explicitly state HTTP client. You can go ahead and do that, but uh, it's not it's not necessary because we don't have two versions of it. So the reason why I did this was because we had the contracts and people would usually look for that. We usually depend on the raw contracts. For example, entities, all of our all of our modules were depending on the entity. However, in the remote data source, we actually went ahead and created and used the actual implementations of those entities. So the same in the same sense, that's what we're doing here. But the HTTP client does not have those that type of um of principle going on for it so let's go ahead and just instantiate http dot clients and for that we need to import http as http now we can close this however since this is empty uh there's so so as you can see everything is using the service locator until we get to the final thing so the final thing is the actual external dependencies so our our um, external dependencies we can instantiate them on their own like we can instantiate them without service locators all right so the last thing is the, the outside world we can instantiate them without the service locator so for this we can actually just go ahead and say client dot new dart has this um it's called a tear off instead of actually just going ahead ahead and invoking this 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 is also just going to create a new instance of this every class has that new inside of it so we can just go ahead and remove that invocation and say dot new it will still do the same thing so this is it so we can split this into different parts so first of all this is our application logic And these are our use cases. After the use cases, we have our repositories. 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 And then we finally have our data sources. And then we finally have our external dependencies from the outside world.